money, intellect, and relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How are you guys doing? This is Ron Step 5 Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, this particular topic came from, actually, I was tagged in a post by my cousin. I'm going to send a shout out to you, Miss Nikita Diamond White. Uh, what's up, cousin? But anyway, she actually tagged me in this particular uh, post. And I thought it was a great conversation, so I want to go through uh, each section of it, at first I was going to read, read it and then go through it, but I'm like, that would take too long doing it, reading it basically twice. So I'm just going to break it down instantly, each paragraph, basically what has been said in my perspective. Now it's by Michael Baston and his book is, uh, woman up, you decide your life, who to love and when to move on. Now, that's the book kind of where this topic is coming from. But basically what he said is men say they want a successful woman, but do they really? Let's keep it real. Generally speaking, men who are accomplished aren't attracted to women who are ambitious. They say they are, but if you ask most successful women, that's not their experience. Men tend to choose women who compliment, compliment them, not those who challenge them. Okay, so first off, what is ambitious? What does that really tell you? Except for she's a person that goes out and, 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 and has ambition. <laughs> doesn't mean she's intellectual. Doesn't mean she's financially well off. Doesn't mean she has integrity. Doesn't mean she has character. Doesn't mean any of that. We, unfortunately, a lot of people in society have a tendency to want to tag and link things together and say this is what it means, and it doesn't. Uh, a perfect example that I, I, I like to use is, I remember uh, watching Steve Harvey one time make the comment that he doesn't have women he doesn't have women friends because he's one that teaches that men and women can't be friends because men always have ulterior motives. Um, you guys can watch my video where I talk about the 90 day rule and you'll know exactly how I feel about that. But anyway, I don't believe it in it. This is the bottom line. But um, I tell people just because a person, and I'm not talking about Steve because I don't know what he's doing in his personal life. I'm not trying to figure out what he's doing in his personal life. That's his life. What I'm focusing on here is the comment itself and what is trying to be projected. And by that, I'm saying he says he doesn't have women as friends. The message that's supposed to be sent out is that's what keeps him loyal and away from doing wrong. Folks, nothing can be further from the truth. Just because I don't have women as friends does not mean I'm committed, does not mean I'm loyal doesn't mean anything except I don't classify them as friends. That's it. But we will try to use things in a way to influence people. If you're not a person that's willing to always look at both sides of everything. And I am. You guys know my personality. I want to look at both sides of everything because it gives me uh, better choices. Versus just my way is the way and, and, and usually you're going to be wrong because there's always better ways to do it, everything. But anyway, but so the ambitious part. OK, now what I will say is through my experience and through research that I've done, um, it is true that men who are, who are well off financially have a tendency to not be attracted to women who are also financially independent. And it's not because they're uh, the challenge or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's because money they have. So they don't need more money. They're not looking for more money. But what a lot of guys that have money are looking for is the boost in their ego. And which he does mention, he talks about the ego and what they look for is eye candy. For those of you who don't understand that, that's that 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 kind of like model that you can have with you where you go someplace and everybody goes, whoa. In other words, 
a trophy. That's what they're looking for because they're trying to send out this, this thing that they got everything going on. They, they're the perfect person. They're financially well off. They got the woman. They got, that's what they're trying to put out. Not saying it's true, but that's the message that, again, trying to get people to link up and believe is something that is not necessarily going on. And as a lady, you should be happy if that's the, his ideal that you guys don't work out. Why would you want to be in a relationship with someone who wants you as eye candy? Because eventually candy starts to get stale. Candy starts to crumble. You guys know what I'm talking about. Eventually, you're not the same eye candy you was before. That's why a lot of these guys that have the money end up outside their relationship cheating or they end up divorced. Why? Because they got married for the wrong reason. They got married for eye candy. And therefore, when you're no longer fitting that bill, he's going to move on. So, but this men tend to choose women who compliment them, not those who challenge them. From my perspective, the challenge is finding a woman who will compliment you. That's what you're looking for is a woman that compliments you. Because what compliment means is where I'm weak, you're strong, and where you're strong, I'm weak, and we work together. We complement each other. That's how we move forward. That's what's successful. Looking at sports, a successful team, that's what you do. You go find different players to fit different positions to complement each other. So I'm not understanding the comment that, you know, they tend to choose women who compliment them, not those who challenge. That's what you want. What's the challenge about? Why would you look for, she's challenged you to do what? If you're already well off financially, what kind of challenge is she supposed to be giving you? But anyway, uh, you guys understand. So I'm, I'm hoping you get that where I'm saying how we move things around in words and stuff. And it's just like, okay. But anyway, moving on. He says, when you're working 24 seven to afford that comfortable lifestyle, it's nearly impossible to establish a relationship with a woman who is hustling just like you are, which is why an increasing number of successful women are finding themselves involved with men who are less educated or at least less well off economically. Well, being busy, that's a part of relationships. Um, money doesn't make you busy, <laughs> having it or not having it. Um, you can stay busy regardless. The key is you, you, you make whatever a priority in your life a priority. If your partner is a priority, you will find the time, the time to do it. Those, some of the people that have financial independence use that as an excuse when they neglect their family and stuff that I'm going after, I'm going after financial success for the family. No, you're not. Because if you're neglecting the family, then you're doing it for yourself. Again, for your ego. It's not for the family because you can never neglect your family and do it for them. You have to figure out a way to have a balance and go after the fight. There's nothing wrong going after the economics, but you're never, ever going to miss out on the priority, which is the family. And that includes the wife. I mean, just because she's out there hustling just like you, what they got to do with anything? That's what communication is all about. You find a way to work together. So that you can spend time together, you find time to, 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 to work with the kids, all that. Just because you have money, that's, that's, anyway, you guys can tell, I, I, some of these things, when I hear people say stuff like that, they're cop-outs. They're excuses for people not wanting to take responsibility for their lives and their relationships, and they're looking for excuses on why it's not working. But anyway, uh, in fact, more men are moving into the homes of women and playing the roles of supportive partner while the woman brings home most of the bacon, and that's cool if that works for you. Now, what I've seen a lot of guys that are well, do well financially, this is kind of like that jab at the guys who aren't. This is again, as you guys have heard me say many times before, there's two ways to build the tallest building. One is you build the tallest building. The other one is tear down the buildings that are around you so you are the tallest. The guys that try to degrade the other guys who aren't where they are economic, economically are the ones who are tearing down the building so that they feel better about themselves. We're in an era 
where people want to compare, where women, a lot of women stayed home. So of course the guy was the breadwinner because she was at home. In today's society, most women are working. So you can't compare those two systems when you have one where most women are working and a system where most women stayed at home. That in itself doesn't work. That kind of brings me to, um, uh, because, you know, you guys have heard me talk about when we say, like, people say it, it's a man's job to take care of the woman. Well, I tell people the statement itself is flawed because there are more women than there are men. So with that, how is it possible for men to take care of the women? It ain't enough unless we're going to go past monogamy and go into uh, polygamy and it's okay. And so, and I know, because I said that to somebody one time and their instant comment was, no, 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 no. They're talking about a man that's with a woman. No, you can't make it fit where you want it to fit. If it's a man's job to take care of women, then it's a man's job. Don't try to make it fit what you wanted to say by, oh, no, 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 no. When a man is with a woman, because let's say, for example, that woman is out here doing her thing, making her money. So now what is she supposed to do when she gets a man? Stop what she's doing? Go home now because it makes you feel better. You guys see what I'm saying? The ego stuff. But the key is you can't compare those two systems because what you're basically saying is, what about the women that don't end up with a man? Well, who's going to take care of them? And we go, oh, well, those, they, yeah, they got to take care of Folks, see, that's my point. Quit, quit making these broad statements that don't even hold up. If women have to go out here and make it happen, because that's the, we're not in, in the, again, in where we lived in tribes, where you were in a small community. We're not there anymore. We're in a humongous world now. So people are out here, they got to take care of their stuff. They got to get there. Your key is to find the person that matches up with you. The economics is the external stuff. And I say all the time, find someone who matches up with you internally because we can go get the external stuff together. Because what happens is people want to go get the external and hope the internal works out. Folks, it's, it's, but anyway, but he goes on to say, but women can't have the standard of a six or seven figure man and expect him to adapt to her busy lifestyle. It's probably not going to happen. It should be no surprise then that accomplished men end up dating the waitress, babysitter, or the entrepreneur woman who is traditional minded and has no problem putting her man first. The one thing that men with money insist on is being a priority, not something you fit into your schedule. Our egos can't handle it. Again, he said ours, and I'm not saying he is putting himself in, in that, but he said our egos. Because I don't buy into, you guys know, I don't buy into the man kind. This is how men think. This is how, no, it's, it's not. That's how you think. And to say that uh, it comes back to when we're talking about the standards, uh, the, the, the six or seven figure income. Again, it's what these guys are looking for in a lot of instances. Again, like I said, is the eye candy. That's why you're having the challenge. But the key is, you can do the exact same thing and go find a man, not the eye candy, but women do do that too. But uh, cause you guys know, I believe in everything it goes both ways, but the key is find the guy that matches with you. I say all the time, if, if you're doing well financially as a woman, why are you, why are you letting the world tell you, you need to be looking at how much the man makes the money's taken care of. We're a team. We're a unit. If you, the key is find out in every area who's better equipped. I've told the story about an event I was at uh, with a company I worked with a long time ago. And this has happened probably about 25, 30 years ago at an event where the, the husband is a pastor. He's a youth pastor. And he was basically telling us, he said, as a youth pastor, if you're doing it right, you're not making any money. And he said, and so fellas, ain't nothing wrong with being a well-kept man. He, he said, uh, my wife does okay. His wife was doing about $250,000 a year. Folks, again, this was like 20, 25, 30 years ago. So she was doing two fifty dollars then. You know what, what that meant back then? Because that's good money today. 
If they listened to all this, this stuff that people were putting out here, their relationship couldn't work. So what should he have done? Not be in a relationship with her? Not follow his passion that he believes he's been called to to be a youth minister? She shouldn't date him because he doesn't make the kind of money she, she, that, that she makes? So she's doing a comparison game? Or does she just find the man that matches perfect with her and she goes, I got the money thing taken care of. I remember Lisa Nichols uh, talking about that. And for those of you who haven't listened to Lisa Nichols, powerful lady, go check out her stuff. But Lisa talked about the fact that she says, I do well for myself. Matter of fact, she's the second uh, black woman to actually have her business on the, on the, on the uh, stock exchange. Yes, second. Bad lady, that's a bad woman right there. But she says, I do well. So I don't need to find a man that matches me. And she said, because that would be hard to find. I also use the example of, of Oprah. I said, there are not many men in the world who match her financially. So if she's looking for someone based on economics, she probably will just stay single, which, you know, she, she's already said, at least the gentleman that she's with, um, if they're still together. I haven't researched anything recently. I don't know. Last I heard, they were still together. But she said he's traditional. She's not. She believes in, in, in her in being very independent. And um, But they're still together. So, But if she based it on economics, as people are saying, she wouldn't give him the time of day. See, the key is finding the person that matches you we're working as a unit, as a team, and wherever your strengths are, you run with it. Where my strengths are, I'm running with it. And so, but anyway, so I hope that was that was pretty clear there. But that the end of, end up messing with the waitress and the babysitter and all that. That's kind of what I talked about a little bit earlier when I said the eye candy. That's why he's messing around with the waitress and all the other people because it, it it's not because of the time that you guys aren't spending this and that because his ego. It's all about him. And as he said, they don't want to be, they want to be a priority. In other words, it's like I said, you're a collection, just like everything else where you put them on a pedestal and they are your, they are your world. Grow up. Yeah. For those of you who believe, grow up. You there's nothing wrong with her looking out for her man and, and making sure he knows that he is the priority in her life. And vice versa. She has to know that she's your priority. I try to tell young guys that all the time. If your girlfriend or wife knows that she is the priority, she doesn't have a problem with you hanging out with the fellas. She don't have a problem with you going out and doing stuff because she knows she's a priority. But what, I'm, what he's talking about is the ego is kind of catering to the point that you're almost become like a servant to him and his wishes. And unfortunately, there's a lot of women that believe that, that that's a woman's role. I don't buy into it. I'm a firm believer in, again, you guys know I talk about the four personalities. You're strong in two. Your partner's usually strong in other two. And that's the reason we see the world differently and we complement each other. So where your strength is, again, you run with it and vice versa. So anyway, y'all know I get fired up on this kind of stuff. But anyway, he says successful men aren't motivated by a woman's income, kind of what we're talking about. Degrees are by her success. What's important to him is her domestic skills, her figure, her sexual ad adventure adventurousness, and uh, her availability. And furthermore, her willingness to accept a certain degree of philandering. And so, again, it's kind of what I'm saying. He's, he's basically looking for a woman to be uh, his, 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 uh, his, what is it? Um, his maid or whatever. They, who was it that said, um, Joel Osteen? He said, uh, he had made that comment. He said, she is your wife. She is not your maid. You can hire people to do all this other stuff. And that's kind of my point. Like he's talking about the domestic skills and stuff. You can hire, if you doing well financially, hire somebody to cook. She's not your flunky. And maybe that's the wrong word to use, but she's not your maid. If she likes to cook and she's good at cooking, good. 
But again, we're in a different era. I mean, now don't get me wrong. For those of you who still believe in, in the she stays at home and he works, if you can find a relationship where that works, run with it. I'm not trying to tell you how to live, how not to live. I just have a challenge with people trying to put that out there when in this society, um, I remember reading uh, probably about a year ago, it said half of the millionaires in the U.S. are women. Women making money. So the average guy is not going to be able to, to, to match that particular income. So again, and this goes out to you ladies that are doing well financially. Quit listening to all the garbage and, 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 and worried about where he is financially. You know if you got a guy that's driven. You know if you got a guy that has great character and great integrity. The amount of money may not matter because the fact is you are getting paid very well. Like I was saying, the one that's making $250,000 a year. She was getting paid well. Again, that was 25 years ago. Why they, they ain't worried about money. Money's not an issue in their house. She wants all the other things that he can offer. And that's why they're married. That's what you're looking for. Who, I get it. Okay, let me move on. Uh, and then he says, for the professional woman who is busy, demands monogamy and puts her family first, much respect is given to her, but she will rarely be the first choice of the men who, who she's most compatible with intellectually and financially. Now, I agree, uh, women that put their, their, their family first, much respect. And guys that don't, don't deserve the respect. You guys follow me? Um, your family should be your priority. This is, again, this is not a male-female conversation. Your family should, male and female, your family should be your priority. What you mean for women, much respect. Like the guy, that's, his family shouldn't be his priority. No! A lot of guys find that out when it's too late when she leaves. Or when the kids get older and they don't want to have a relationship with them. Then they start to realize what was really important. And then he said, uh, who's most compatible with intellectually and financially. Here's, the, here's a, a bad belief that's out there. Is that people link money to intellect. They ain't got nothing to do with each other. Nothing in most cases. Now, some people are financially well off because of their intellect. But the intellect is in a particular field. See, we have a tendency to say... Because a person went to school and got a degree, that makes them intelligent. No, that makes them educated in a particular field. So what is the definition of intellect and who is deciding what this intellect is anyway? So again, it's finding the person that, that matches you. Matter of fact, um, the last I heard, they said 70% of, of most graduates are not in the field that they went to school for, that they got the degree in. 70%. Hmm. Is that intellect? Folks, most millionaires, most entrepreneurs, most businesses that you look at today that are the most successful businesses in the world aren't run by people who got degrees. Do your research. People out here, they still throwing that stuff out here. Schooling is important to get you because schooling and edu, and I shouldn't say schooling, education is happening in many different ways. It's not only in a college that education actually takes place. Education is something you should be doing every single day. So you, because a person like using an entertainer, for example, you have an entertainer that's not smart book wise, not smart intellectually or anything else, but is making great money. So she's most compatible with intellectually and financially. I don't get it. They don't mean the same thing. Again, there are a lot of guys that are intellectual, 
but don't have money. Whole bunch of guys that got a bunch of money and don't have intellect. None of that tells, even intellect, doesn't tell if you have character and integrity. And you guys know, to me, those are the major determining factors that what you should be looking for in a relationship. Integrity and character. Because again, that's internal stuff. External, we can make that happen together. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on Monday, Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you on Monday. And then for those of you on the relationships, I look forward to seeing you back here on Relationship Thursday. But bottom line is, folks, don't link up money and intellect that they mean the same thing. And hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll start to look at people as individuals and get to know them and find the person that's right for you. Don't let the world tell you what is important because they don't know. As we can look at the statistics with all the divorcing, all the cheating that's going on, they haven't figured it out. As I keep saying, learn to love you first. Then go find someone who matches, compliments you. And then go out here and again, if you're the, if you're the breadwinner, male or female, and I know some guys are going to hear this and they get mad whenever they hear that. They go, that's this generation. We keep making it sound like it's okay for men, you know, to, to, to as he said, move into the house of the woman. Man, quit, quit, quit living in the past. That's a person that's stuck in this trying to play that macho, I'm the man role. Folks, I can get into that at a whole different time. All those are myths. Um, even when we talk about man being a hunter and all that kind of stuff, all those things are myths. I was just talking to somebody about that today. We were laughing. I said, men don't know nothing about hunting. M most men, if you ever left them in a position to actually hunt, they'd starve to death because they ain't got a clue. That takes a talent. That takes training. And and whether we're talking about women or not, it, it, but anyway, <laughs> I almost got a whole new presentation. But anyway, you guys enjoy yourself. Hopefully uh, you got something out of this. Make sure you run over to my uh, site, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. That has everything that I have going on. And whatever you guys are doing, make sure you're having fun. Because uh, as, as I always say, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care and enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.